So good morning, Steve Sharp, Lake Cell Dynamics. Um, what my company does, the, the heart of it, is help people, uh, help my clients and their companies be able to accelerate the results, get those results quicker, with less time and less, less effort. And what we're going to look at today is some of the key attributes of how my clients do that. And look at success um, in two different ways, at least some of the attributes of it. The, the question to be asking yourself at the end of this is, you know, are you willing to do what's necessary. There's some obvious things that we look at and work on working towards success, and there's maybe some less obvious things we're going to look at that and what I talk about today. So my clients consistently say, whether it's in sport or business, that they get more done with less time and less effort, and they get to be able to enjoy it more as well, and that's what we're going to look at today. How do they do that? Here's one of my bigger clients, uh, manager at Citigroup, said so even though his workload went 25%, you still still able to get those results with less effort and, uh, and less stress. So how many people here, matter of interest, how many people here would like to get more, more done with less effort, less time, less stress? And um, yeah, we all would like to do it, isn't it? So that's what we're going to look at today. Here's a couple of people, well, one person you may know, um, Mary Flavelle at the top. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, I've worked with Mary a little bit, and she's been able to see the power of learning how to discipline the mind, stay more focused, both in her business and with her darts. Um, had a lot of success with that. Brian at the bottom, you wouldn't know, but he's the managing director of a company in Perivale. And uh, he was overworked in his business, working 12 hours, 14 hours a day, no time to go home to his parents or his parents and son, his family, but was able to find out how to work more effectively, stay more focused, get home to his family, get the family life back. But also, he found that he lost his confidence in playing in competitive golf, which was a passion of his. And what he was able to find out actually not how not to um, wilt under pressure, if you like. It's easy to be at our best when things are going well, when the workload is maybe a, a nice level. But there are always times when we have extra pressure, those critical moments, like could be with a new client uh, in a proposal situation, it could be given a presentation, it could be in a sports or something you do outside of work. Uh, it's, it's those critical moments, those critical, critical times. How can we be more consistent and our best at those times? And that's what um, I think the unique part of what I do with my clients. So we're going to look at the external and internal elements of success and acronym of FACE. FACE is an acronym, and we're going to look at what those are. So the first F is focus. Um, and on a more fundamental level, it's like, are we dwelling on what's happened, what's maybe what's gone wrong, what could have happened? Or are we focused on where we're going? Do we know where we're going? Um, what are we working towards? So that's the kind of obvious place where people look. And some pretty practical things you can work with to help you go after what you know you want to go after. So one of the, the fundamental levels is to look at what's going to give you the biggest impact. You, hopefully you know where you want to focus, what you want business to do. But what's going to give you the Biggest impact for the least amount of effort. So prioritizing what you need to do on a daily basis, but especially if you've got a lot of things to do, go through them and look at what, what's going to give the biggest impact, and that may well be financial within the business, and how much effort are each of those going to take. And one of the things I do with my clients is help them figure out which are the real key priorities and what they need to focus on. That's impact. And the second ABCs are, on a daily basis, a really powerful way to prioritize what you want to do is a, the A's are what absolutely have to be done today. The B's are what would be blinkingly good to do today. You might insert your own word there. But really important, but not absolutely critical. And the third, well, it could wait. And the key, but obvious thing there would be to do the A's. If you get to some of these, great. And that will give you more progress and in the areas you really need to focus on. If you get to some of the C's, brilliant, but you're, what you're doing there is you're focusing on the stuff that's going to give you the biggest impact for the business. So those are the external stuff that often get looked at. But the other part of what I'm going to look at today are the internal things, and that's really more important on a fundamental level. So the first question is why? You know, why you do do what you do? What's the purpose? Um, often people when they ask those questions they might go to the head and say to earn money, to get a new car, to pay the mortgage, those kind of things. But the more powerful question is, why are you doing this at an intrinsic level, maybe at the heart level, the real deeper values level? 
are you doing what's really important to you? And then the discipline part is developing the mental discipline and awareness, both um, to keep you focused, and especially when we're under a lot of pressure, how do we do this to stay focused on what we need to pay our attention to and keep that focus without getting distracted? So if the cat comes in, or someone comes up to you, or a new problem comes up, how something falls down outside the room, how are we going to stay focused here? We're taught how to think in school, but we're not really taught how to discipline our mind, how to maintain the focus on the things that are important to us. And one of the key areas that we're fundamentally different in what we do is we help people understand how our minds work in a simple way to be able to maintain that focus. So it doesn't matter if it's in a conversation, while giving a presentation, having, um, with a client, focusing on a spreadsheet, playing golf, playing tennis, um, with the family, it doesn't matter. It's what, how do we maintain the focus and not be in a scattered um, state of mind? That's one of the key areas to be able to get more done with less effort. How many people would like to be able to find, say, two hours extra a day? How many people would like to find that? Two hours extra a day. Not working longer, but working in a way that we're able to maintain the focus on the things that matter. And that's one of the typical things that my clients find, they're able to, to keep that focus. So they end up being able to create more time, rather than having to do time management to get more effective, which is helpful to agree. Again, an external focus. And being able to maintain the focus gives it creates the time because we get rid of what I call it mental spam. All the thinking that's going on that's not really serving us on a day-to-day -day basis. So that takes an awareness, some skill and knowledge of how to do that, and what's one of the fundamental differences that we have when we work with clients. So the second element of uh, face is accountability. So how are we really accountable for what we're doing and those people around us? So one of the so SPA, SPA stands for having full ownership, that single point accountability. So if we're a sole practitioner, that's easy maybe, there's no one else to hand it over to. But one of the keys in working with other people is to get really clear on who's got the, the single amount ownership of that problem. That's anything that goes wrong or anything that needs to be handled. So it's like you, John, this morning, said, I'm taking complete ownership of what's going on. You need people to have that. Not only what, what they're going after, but who is going to really own it and have everybody clear on that. And the second is, um, again, from an external factor, is understanding how we are creating whatever happens around us or doesn't. And it's some questions you can ask yourself about the things that happen is, how am I creating, promoting, or allowing these things to happen. An example of that is, um, you know, it could be in a pub and things start kicking off and some people start talking quite loudly. And then we've got some choices. You know, do you stay stood, sat where you're sat because well, we've got these seats earlier and there's no other good seats? Um, would that, if we stay there, if there's a potential for a fight, you know, am I gonna actually allow myself to get brought into that by staying there and think this is I've got my seat. Um, you know, if I actually knock them or say something and they take the wrong way, I could actually create, create and promote that kicking off as well or, or blowing up even further. So it's taking more ownership about the things that happen around us and, and my, the results I get. Rather than just saying, well, I'm doing this because that's what I, I want to do, is understanding how we influence what goes on around us and the outcomes we get or consequences and taking, again, more ownership of it. So that could be some things you might ask yourself. From an inter internal perspective, how do I develop great, greater response ability? So no matter what's happening around us, I have the ability to know that whatever's happening, I am responsible for them. My outcomes are based on what's going on inside myself. I'm not arguing with, with reality. So a lot of people get frustrated and upset because things happen around them they don't want to happen. And they get wound up about that rather than that's the way it turns up. And then, so how do we deal with it is the question. So someone might come in and, and change a priority, for example, or change an order. Well, that's the new reality. So how can I maximize that? How can I keep myself in the best state to deal with it and still be able to get the best outcome? And this is a life view perspective. So one of the, again, internally, one of the things that we do is help people understand that the experiences we're having 
and the interaction we have with other people is based on what's going in, on inside us. There's next, next to nothing to do with the external situation. So the stress that we create, for example, our negative experiences, the, the vast majority are down to what we are doing internally. And what are we making up about what's happening? And when we understand how life is really an inside-out process, what's going on in our state of mind, rather than things happening out there making me feel the way I do, once people see it's the other way around that I'm creating my experience by the choices and the thinking I have going on in my head, then it puts people in far more control and far more ability to be less reactive to what's going on around them and be far more effective. They have a greater ability to, to be able to respond in a way that they're choosing. Their response ability increases. Third element is confidence. A, we tend to get drawn to people of confidence. We all, I think many people might spend a lot of their life trying to develop greater and greater confidence. Some of the key areas and ways most people focus are externally focused. So, so they want to get them ever in better positions. It may be through association of groups or with particular people. It may be the, moment, the bigger position I have, the more power I have, the more money I can acquire, the more things I can get. And have, getting confidence through those positions, those external factors. The problem is, and, and it may come through, oftentimes these kind of things, so much, how smart we are, what kind of skills we have, the qualifications we have, the experience, could be down to basic things like looks, you know, and relying on our looks and our, and our maybe our, our image, and having all the best clothes and that kind of thing. The problem with that is, it, it's all externally focused and it can be taken away with a heartbeat. If we're getting a lot of our confidence and feeling good factor from the job we have and the position we have, that we could not have that tomorrow. If we rely on that level for our confidence, then it's very fragile. It can be taken away at a moment's notice. Where if we go deeper in looking into confidence, and down to the emotional level and what I call the natural confidence level, these are the things that can't be taken away from us and are independent to anything that's happening around us. So from an emotional level, um, this could be getting really clear on what are our beliefs and values. Now most people look, might look at beliefs about, especially on networking now, belief in what their product or service is, for example. Again, that's external. What I'm talking about here is what are we individually um, bringing to the party? What do we believe about ourselves? What are the qualities and, and attributes that we have? that we bring to every conversation, every interaction that we have. Because we all know people buy people first. And actually more fundamentally than the, the product or service that we provide, it's who we are. And if we don't fully own and believe and, and are um, really grounded in what we're bringing, actually that will, will not come through. The more we clear on that and what our values are, what we stand for, what we will do, won't do, that gives us far more genuine confidence to come across as a very solid person that's, that's dependable, that people will work with. At a more fundamental level, though, from every moment to moment, there's our state, the state of mind we're in. And that can, be, that can be determined by whether we didn't get any sleep last night. You talk about your cats, like your kiddie moments early in the morning, if you have a lot of those, or if you have kids and we're not losing sleep. That's going to affect our state of mind. We're not going to be as, able to be as effective. So our, on a fundamental physiological level, there's elements that relate to our state of mind, but also how we keep ourselves in a resource place. And when we learn how to be at our best, if you like, getting out of all the, um, the doubting thinking that we have going on, for example, what naturally shows up is that we all have a natural level of confidence. And hopefully every one of you would have known moments, hopefully more than just the odd one, where you're with certain people, you're in certain situations, you naturally just feel at your best, you feel great. And that's that kind of experience I'm talking about. Well, how do we bring that into most of the areas of our life, even in those new situations? Because when we are able to maintain that situation, that state of mind, it doesn't matter where we go, we can always access that natural confidence. And that's, again, it's more fundamental, can't be taken away by any external factors. From a um, final part is everyday habits. So all champions 
whether in business or sport or other activities they have, everyday practices that they do, <coughs> do that contribute to them being successful. They tend to be behavioral for part of it. And that could be things like, you know, we all, we all turn up here at Tuesday morning to go networking. Some of us, um, it could, this could be our everyday weekly meeting. Others, we might go to others as well. But it's making that commitment to do what we know is important. It could be keeping commitments, doing things that will keep us learning, that will keep um, creating opportunities. Like Bruce, you were talking about that decision to make a call, a call to a new person every day. That would be one of those external behaviors that will help us be successful. Um, but then as you were talking about having goals the next month clear now, when we have those goals clear and we can work those, that puts in a far uh, strong position. Especially if we publicly declare those goals and other people know what they are as well. That only, not only helps us stay honest and work towards them, but helps other people support us and have things show up that may not have done otherwise. But from an internal perspective, again, there's some everyday things, that, an everyday moment things that we can do to help us be successful. And at a fundamental level, that's understanding how to develop this more discipline in both our mind, emotional level, and our physiology level. Uh, there's some basic physiological things we can do to help with our state of mind, help with our health, help with our mental clarity, help the way we interact with people, cut down stress. There's a lot of basic things in our basic human operating systems, I call it, that we're not taught in school. It can be very simple, but the more we understand how they all work together, it's like having a dashboard of how we drive ourselves forward. So we know when we can go flat out, but also know when maybe we're not at our best and we need to just back off a little bit and things to, to look for. At a fundamental level, um, having great awareness and discipline of how we um, keep ourselves in a more effective state of mind helps us get those results far more effectively and far quicker. So if we look at the sum to summarize those, and what we can do is have some questions about this after I've done this. Um, there's an external face and an internal face of um, success. And not these are not the exhaustive factors, but some, some of the elements. So we've talked about focus, and we looked at the impact of um, where to focus our impact and the ABCs of prioritizing on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure we maximize what we do. But internally, we were looking at understanding why we're doing what we're doing, why is it important, um, a, a deeper level, emotional level, and that could be towards you know, caring for our family rather than just putting a car in, in the driveway to drive, and having greater discipline, um, emotional discipline, mental discipline. But the benefits that come from that is we get better results but with less stress. So it's balancing again this internal and external Second was accountability. So how can we create greater accountability from the external perspective, the SPA, that single point of accountability, either for ourselves or other people. And John, you were talking about earlier, needing get, getting clear about the things that you need to personally drive and take more ownership for, and other things maybe you can get other people. But it's, it's getting that clarity and focusing where you need to. Uh, and then the more we can take that responsibility of looking at how am I creating, promoting, and allowing the things around me to happen, to, again, to take more ownership of ourselves of the things that happen to us and how they show up. Those are the external things. From an internal responsibility, and the more I'm able to be um, the master of my experience, the master of how I respond to what goes on around me, that puts me in more control. It also, interestingly, some research here that says that in organizations, especially the people who are the most accountable are the happiest people. So accountability is often thought of as a, an onerous thing. Mm. That you know it's more work. But actually, when we do take that accountability and we focus on things, things we can do something about, then we have more control and we end up being you know, to feel happier. Because we're clear about the things we can be accountable for, and then we do what we know we can be accountable for. So I thought that was a really interesting bit of research I found is the most accountable people in organizations are the happier people. So there's something really beneficial for us as individuals, it's not rather than a, an onerous 
um, extra burden from an organizational perspective. Confidence, there's a big distinction between external, positional power, um, the things that people look for to feel confident, but underneath they end up having um, an, an annoying lack of confidence. And if I think about myself when I was younger and how this works, um, pans out, I was really good at sports, fortunately, when I was a kid. And I captained lots of sports teams. I was even um, like a prefect at school. But underneath me, underneath, inside of me as a person, I had very little personal confidence. So if I didn't have a sporting capability, who knows what I might have, but fortunately I did. And it was a good face, it was a good front, it was a good veneer. But ultimately, you know, through life, what I've had to learn is, how, well, what is the real source of, how do I develop more, more of that natural confidence? So no matter what I do, I can, I can tap into that. And that's not necessarily a five minute journey. The more we can go into understanding ourselves emotionally and more fundamentally, our state of mind and how to tap into our natural confidence, then we, it's, we're not relying on the external factors. And we know we can go into new situations, we learn skills and we can apply them, but we have a natural resource of confidence that we can rely on. And through that, we have a greater sense of well being, greater sense of trust in ourselves and be able to handle situations, greater sense of, sense of trust in other people as well. And finally, everyday habits. So there's external um, things we might do from making a phone call to getting out there networking, to keeping in touch with our clients as we talked about earlier on. The, the more fundamental understanding of how our mind, our emotional level and our physiology all works together to keep ourselves in that optimum state of mind. Which is really important when the pressure's on. When it's a lot of pressure, how do we keep ourselves in a healthy place to keep functioning, not to exhaust ourselves? Because there's some real problems if we do, if we don't. If we do though, we are more effective and we get greater satisfaction. So we're far more effective on an ongoing basis, we get more of the results we're looking for and have a greater effect, more effective impact. The question is, and this is the real question, you know, what are we going to do differently about this? We talked about some things we've learning from each other this morning. What are we going to do differently from um, what we've learned already this morning, but understanding how important it is to look at the internal face of success? The more we understand, understand ourselves and be able to be more effectively uh, in the moment and, and focused in what we need to try to achieve. Because we can all work harder, we can always take on more pressure, but the problem is that what usually and often get us stressed. And unfortunately, it's literally a killer's path. Now we've all, all heard of the killer app in, in uh, the, the, IT, the, in the uh, internet world, which is a good thing. But unfortunately, if we don't understand how to keep ourselves in an effective state of mind, keep our physiology in a healthy place, it literally is a killer, killer path. I was given a, a presentation last week um, for one of the big banks and we're looking at the physiology and the state of mind linked to both stress and performance. Um, one of the examples I used was, you might have even heard of these stories, where you can get really fit people in foot playing professional rugby, professional um, football, and other sports like that, in the 20s and 30s, and in the middle of a game they have a heart attack. And some of them even die. So these are people who are extremely fit but they die because their underlying physiology is not healthy. And what science has, has, has taught us, and actually one of the things I bring to my clients is how do we bring our physiology into a healthy state so that we, we minimize the impact of the symptoms of stress that cause death, can do it quickly from heart attack, but also affect all the major systems we have, our immune system, our respiratory system, um, it's at the cause of at the causal root of all the major diseases we have from Alzheimer's, diabetes, obesity. So there's some real major health issues if we don't sort that out. And it's, we've got to, <coughs> people don't necessarily appreciate that. I think, well, I get stressed, I get a cold. Well, the fact is, on a long-term basis, it's potentially a lot, lot worse than that, and it's a huge problem. So it's really important that we understand that the danger that there isn't enough time to go into that here today.
but it's literally so success of mind game. Make sure you have a mind for success. And um, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Because that's a brief like, introduction, a snapshot. What kind of questions might you have? Or thoughts? Of things. I, I, I use the, the mnemonic of this one is TOT, T O T, which is take one thing. You know, there's a lot that's come across here, obviously, as you've seen it, and we make some notes. Mm -hmm. And it's picking out one of those things that I can work on. Yeah. And then move on to another thing. The danger is to try and go away and implement all this. Yeah. In fact, you then sort of almost get confused because you haven't got the whole picture, you've just given us a taste of it. But there's one or two things there that is easy to implement. So what, what were some of the things that you're going to take away from us? Because it's like, it's like a toolkit. We like find one or two things we can work on and perhaps it's a really good analogy. Well, one of them was actually mentioned before we started, which was self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. Theory of success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which may surprise you, but probably won't. Mm -hmm. um, and then, if you look at the, the good acronym for fear, and are you familiar with the acronym of fearers? False expectations appearing yeah. real. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we're making it up without thinking. So that is one of the fundamental ways that our um, thinking process can hinder us, not only from fear of failure, but from the fear of success. It's stuff we're still making up. I mean, you were talking about sort of everyday habits and behavioural things. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that drives my whole day is when I can fear the smoke. Mm -hmm. So I almost plan to go out so I don't smoke. Mm -hmm. And so there comes a point where you're thinking, right, you know, you're, you're driving your day around you know, where you want to be so you can have the smoke. Now, I'd also um, hazard a guess that part of the reason that one of the other benefits that you get from taking those moments, it's a, it's a time to clear your mind and have a bit of thinking time. Yeah. So one of the things that you'll need to do is learn, well, how can I still maintain that quality thinking time without going for a smoke? Yes. And that again, space. sorry? That space. That space. space. Yeah. yeah. And one of, the, one of the questions I ask, I ask clients are, all around the world for the last 10 years is where do they have their creative ideas? And it's rarely on the job, rarely, and no matter where they are in an organization. But when they understand how actually all they need to do is look, rather than going to the gym, going, to, going for a walk, going for a cup of tea, or going for a smoke, all those behavioral things, one of the, the fundamental level is understanding how to shift into a different state of mind where we're actually more creative. And so actually you can do that without needing to do it with behavioral things, but the key is, one of the questions for you is how do you still maintain those moments so you still have mm. that regenerative time for yourself in the business? Mm. So taking away from what you've heard this morning, what's something you're going to take away? Something that maybe you can do even better? Bruce, Bruce has volunteered one already. Focus the mind. Yeah. Decide what you need to do. So that when you go through the day, you actually deliver what you want. So of being sidetracked by people. Yeah. If you don't prioritise up front, you don't get really clear, then it's very easy to get dragged off. Yeah. So you, if it's taking an hour up front at the beginning of the day to get clear on those priorities, that's probably what time well spent so that you can focus the rest of the way it's really going to make the most impact. You might be a little straight I've been asked to sort out petty cash slips, for example. We haven't really. Which is um, focus on what you want to do rather than what you consider you ought to do. Because mm -hmm. it's very difficult to do any of this if you believe that you ought to be doing something. And it, and it was right at the top, which is you know what's the the, um, the internal focus, the what's the purpose of this? Mm -hmm. You don't get dragged into other people's agendas. Yeah. And the more we can get clear on what that purpose is, and the more we can get clear on the goals that will drive our purpose, yes. the more, more we can maximise our time going after what's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's something for you? I think making your priorities clear what, where you're going mm -hmm. and what you need to do mm -hmm. to get there. Left me on the asking for help and having the confidence, I'm quite a confident person. Mm -hmm. I don't ask for help. If I can avoid it, I won't. Yeah. I mean, one of the things about school, 
uh, and say to some businesses that in school it used, used to be my day, it's all about getting the, either one right answer and then doing it ourselves. And if, if we are capable people, we go into the work world with that ability as well, we get, that gets rewarded. So what we did, the muscle we don't get to develop is, a, is actually asking for some input from other people and support. And actually, in the, in the bigger world, it's more about how can we get the results as quick as we can, and that's usually with support of other people. So that's a really good insight. Thank you. Thank you.